was a place for me to kind of tinker, and then that tinkering ended up finding its way into um, into client work. And uh, I've been using Flash ever since it's been called Future Splash, if that gives you sort of any indication of, of what kind of old timer I am. Um, it was actually called Future Splash Animator when I when I picked it up for the for the first time, and uh, I actually went to to art school. So my my background actually is in art and and not in programming, and but I had this desire and this hunger to to kind of understand programming and and see if I could use this process uh, in the creation of my work, and by some fortuitous celestial event, um, I think it was at one of the very first uh, flash forwards. Um, in San Francisco, I believe, about 10 years ago, I, I met a young gentleman by the name of Brandon Hall. And uh, we, too, just really kicked it off because um, he really had that computer science background uh, that I was sort of lacking. And I had the art background that Brandon Hall was sort of lacking. So about 10 years ago, we, we started a friendship. And uh, over the course of those 10 years, we've been collaborating on projects together um, to, to very different degrees. Sometimes he hires me to, to work on a project at his studio, and sometimes uh, I hire him to work on projects in my studio, and then sometimes we just come up with crazy ideas and, and work them out together. And the reason why I mention this is because um, when we first got started, when ActionScript 1 first came out, it was relatively easy. Um, uh, Brandon very quickly got me caught up on um, the use of components. And components were really great for a guy like me who comes from uh, an art and design background because I could uh, create these ideas, package up these ideas, and store them as components. And I could reuse them over and over and over again. Uh, and so that was nice. And so uh, several years ago, I was teaching workshops on ActionScript 1 and how to uh, actually make these components. But most of the people that I was working with were 80% uh, uh, artists and designers, uh, working with them to actually bring a programmatic process into uh, the work that they uh, were creating. And then the other 20% was working with other developers who had uh, backgrounds in uh, computer science and math to sort of extend um, this world that we, were, that we were working on. Well, eventually ActionScript 1 became ActionScript 2, and, and uh, while we could still use uh, components, the, the, really the structure of the language changed. And really, my, my work sort of uh, morphed into using AS1 components into using AS2 classes. And I was learning how to create objects and classes and, and all this other stuff. And so basically, I had this uh, arsenal of weaponry that I could sort of draw upon um, to create work. Um, a client would come in, and I, and I knew that I would have this resources of tools and behaviors that I could use uh, to aid me in the creation of work. Um, well, now we're up to ActionScript 3. And as you know, um, ActionScript re, uh, 3 is, is a whole other monster. Um, I've, I've often said uh, to people that um, working in ActionScript 2 and ActionScript 1, it was like spending 10 years learning how to speak Spanish. And then when ActionScript 3 came out, all of a sudden everyone was speaking Italian. Um, there's a lot of similarities in the language, but fundamentally it's a completely uh, different language. So uh, through conversations with Brandon, um, you know, I was talking about like, okay, you know, I was basically moving into ActionScript 3, and I realized that I had this whole uh, resource of, of, uh, of behaviors and classes and things that did things that produced magic that, I w that were useless. I was going to have to port all this stuff up to ActionScript 3 in order to utilize um, a lot of the speed and a lot of the features in ActionScript 3. So, uh, this discussion started, and eventually, uh, me and Brandon had some free time. Uh, amazing that we had free time, but we had some free time, and we really started to think about um, well, what would what would I do with all this stuff? Would I do just straight ports uh, into ActionScript three, or would we work on something that was kind of bigger than the than the two of us? And uh, this is where hype comes out of, and. Uh, uh, we chose the the word hype um, because um, uh, so that it would be underwhelming. So that if uh, <laughs> I think if it wasn't the greatest thing, then uh, then cool. 
you know, it, it was just a bunch of hype. Uh, so that's uh, where the where the word came about. And what I want to do is is just work you through some of the uh, some of the demonstrations of of what hype is and how hype works, and uh, how I'm going to talk about uh, using this uh, as a as a two day workshop, and then and and kind of really talk about. Um, um, who this is for and, and, and what to expect. Um, so if, I'm just going to toggle over to Flash here. Um, and I've, I've opened up one of the, uh, the behavior files here. This, this happens to be a, a behavior that just wants to vibrate things. Um, but it wants to know uh, how to vibrate those things. And um, you'll see how we uh, actually talk to the vibration in, in some of our uh, FLA files. So the idea is, is that imagine if that you built this framework that acted as a manager, and uh, you just told that manager um, certain things that you wanted to do, and um, uh, uh, hype would do all the heavy lifting. And this discussion really came about uh, seeing about what was happening with the processing community, about how processing was really aiding uh, designers to sketch very quickly without having to know all the heavy lifting of Java. And the same thing is sort of happening with another uh, thing called open frameworks, which is that same kind of thing where it's very sweet and simple calls uh, and open framework does all the heavy lifting in C++. And me and Brandon really felt like we kind of need that same thing for ActionScript. You know, how could we alleviate um, a lot of the heavy lifting off of artists and designers that maybe don't want to write all this code to do certain things uh, that used to be easy inside of ActionScript 1 and ActionScript 2. So what we've done is, is we've built this framework. And this framework um, is called Hype. And what the framework does is essentially allows artists and designers to make very minimal calls, and Hype does all the heavy lifting, uh, like a manager. Uh, what's also nice about this is that Hype is also an open framework in the sense that uh, any sort of uh, class or behavior can be written to, for it. So um, this allows us to tap into uh, other developers in the community um, who could potentially write uh, more behaviors for hype and other sort of algorithms for, uh, for hype. So here's one that, that I wrote and I thought I would just walk through it. Um, it's only 36 lines of code and essentially what this uh, class does it says I want to vibrate things uh, but you need to tell me some things. Uh, I'd like you to tell me what the springing is of this object, what the damping is of this object, what the minimum variable should be, what the maximum variable should be, and then we have this other variable called use delta, which in the workshop um, I'll talk a little bit about what that does. And so the, the major job of this 36 line uh, behavior is to vibrate something using calculus. So really it's just this one line down here that uh, calculates uh, this behavior's uh, animation. And basically, it's a, it's a line of calculus that's uh, affecting the speed of an object based on spring uh, and damping. So uh, this is good because we have this whole community of, of uh, artists and designers that maybe don't have this, this knowledge of math, wouldn't know how maybe to, to write um, a line of calculus. Uh, so hype allows us to sort of define these behaviors and allows an artist to not have to know um, what's happening underneath the hood to utilize um, uh, some of this math to create um, interesting animation. So uh, the framework will be open. Anybody can download it. Anybody can add on to it. Anybody can write their own behaviors. And if uh, an artist or designer really wanted to look under the hood, they could open up these class files and start to break down uh, what's actually happening. So. Uh, that's what a behavior file would look like, and uh, so the, the question would be again: Who, you know, on October first and second, who would this workshop be for? Um, it would be for artists and designers who want to bring a little bit of uh, programming into their animation and sort of holding their hand through that process. But it's also for developers who could help us uh, write behaviors and classes to extend uh, what Hype is capable of doing.